Okay, this is joint work with um, Jennifer Zhang. Um, is the screen visible? Yes, okay, good. So most physical reasoning these days, um, both in scientific computation and in AI and in cognitive psychology, uh, takes place in a closed world in the sense that the problem statement fully specifies up to some level of description. Uh, first, the initial state, the initial situation. Uh, second, the dynamic theory. Uh, and third, uh, the exogenous events or boundary conditions, you know, anything that, that, that's assumed to happen. Um, and in particular, if you are using simulation or physics engines, which is by far the dominant method used in scientific computation and a very popular theory in cognitive psychology of physical reasoning, uh, those essentially all assume a closed world. Uh, you, can, you can twist the methodology uh, to fit, to, 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 to weaken the closed world assumption, but not very far. Okay, uh, what I want to first do is in the first part of my talk, I wanna talk about uh, open world reasoning in general, and then I'll talk about what we're doing. So I wanna argue first that open world reasoning is in fact important for AI systems. Let me just give a couple of examples. One is you pack your clothes in a duffel bag, you lock the zipper, uh, you, you're taking a flight to Chicago, so you check the bag foolishly uh, and it's lost. And then three days later, it turns up at the Dallas airport and it's scuffed up and intact and locked. And therefore, though you don't know what's happened since, uh, you can't say what's happened since, so you can't simulate what the behavior is since it's locked. Uh, and since presumably uh, you have the key, you can still be sure that the clothes are still inside. Uh, a second example, this was a very charming one, I thought, from uh, Smith, it was featured in Smithsonian Magazine a few months ago. So they found some beads and twine at an archaeological site in Alaska. And they determined that the beads from their structure were manufactured in Venice in the 1400s, and that the twine was local plant material from Alaska, also carbon dated to the 1400s. Uh, and the Europeans invasion uh, had not uh, you know, reached anywhere close to Alaska or, or uh, there had not been any communication lines. So they inferred that the beads were in fact brought overland through Asia and across the Bering Strait. And of course, one knows almost nothing about what actually happened here, what the starting situation was, what the exogenous events were, but one can still make useful and interesting inferences. Now, open world versus closed world is not a binary dichotomy. It's a, it's a matter of degree, there's more and less. So the extreme form of closed world inference is deterministic prediction. You have a complete description of the starting scene, you have a complete, uh, you have a deterministic theory and you can predict completely the final situation. Complete is always relative to some level of description. Um, weakening the open world, uh, uh, closed world assumption, one can consider uh, prediction in a world which is either probabilistic, you have a probabilistic dynamic theory or probabilistic ad, uh, exogenous events uh, or adversarial, you have an enemy. Uh, the states may be partially observable. You may be doing qualitative reasoning, um, Ken Forbes' style where uh, you only have going um, positive and negative and going up and going down uh, and you want to reason in those terms. Uh, there is a substantial body of, of literature on inverse reasoning. You're given the trajectory or you're given the final state and you want to determine the physical parameters. Uh, and then there is what uh, I want to focus on, what I, I have called uh, radically incomplete reasoning. You're given, as in the examples of the duffel bag and the, and the beads in Alaska, you're given only very partial information. There is no possible way you can reconstruct most of the uh, features of what's going on, but you want to make as much, as many inferences as you can. So what Jennifer and I have been doing is, um, is, is working in the world, in the micro world of containers. So it's a toy micro world that has objects and containers and lids. 
uh, and you are um, you're given some specifications, which can be a partial characterization of the state at various times. You don't have to have a full characterization at any time, a partial enumeration of the actions and some constraints which specify that particular actions don't occur. The duffel bag doesn't get unzipped. And the goal is to make sound inferences about later states. And what uh, Jennifer primarily has done is to produce a uh, proof of concept implementation in Prolog, and currently just a small toy implementation. Um, because we're working in Prolog, and Prolog has his negation as failure, and that's not really great for open world reasoning. We need some uh, workaround, uh, workarounds to get negation to, to do the right thing with unbound variables. So the micro world, going down into the details a bit, the micro world has uh, currently four sort, sorts. There are objects, times, locations, and actions. Uh, five types of objects, closed containers, open containers, lids, containers with lids, which is a pair of objects, uh, and blocks. And um, five, uh, sorry, six actions to load an object into a container, to unload an object from a container, uh, to seal uh, a, a container with a lid, creating a container with lid, to unseal a container with lid, creating an open container and the lid separately, to carry an object from one location to another and to dump the object. And what happens when you dump it, here's a picture of dumping, is that everything which is inside a closed container remains inside that closed container. Any, otherwise, everything comes out of everything else. A couple of questions in chat. Uh, okay. uh, uh, clever bat. Um, The uh, so ex a simple example is between T1 and T2, we specify, we specify that uh, between T0 and T1, you load object OA into the container OC, and between T1 and T2, you seal OC with a lid, and you specify the constraint that the, the container does not come unsealed between uh, T2 and T3, but you say nothing else about what might have happened between T2 and T3. You may have put OC into some other container. You may have carried it around. You may have loaded something else into something else. Um, and you want to be able to infer nonetheless that OA is uh, still inside OC at time T3. And open world container has almost as much to do with what you're not allowed to infer as what you can infer. So it's very important that if we leave out the constraint that it's not unsealed, that we are unable to make the inference that it's uh, still inside the container. We do not make a closed world uh, assumption over, uh, over actions. Uh, we don't assume that just because we didn't specify anything, nothing happened between T2 and T3, that nothing did happen. And so and without the constraint, it would be possible that uh, OC was unsealed and OA was taken out or dumped or, or C was dumped. And therefore the inference, without the, inf the constraint, the inference is invalid. How am I doing for time? Um, a more complicated example, OA, object OA is loaded into uh, OB. OB is loaded into OC, OC is carried to uh, location L, and then OC is dumped at location L, and you have the constraint that between uh, T2 and T3, uh, OC is neither unloaded nor dumped, and you assume that only one action happens at a time in this model. Uh, and we therefore we want to assume that when OC is dumped, OA is now at, you know, OA was carried along with B and OC, and it's now at location L. Um, where we want to take this, first of all, we, the, 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 what we're working on now is dealing with asynchronous events, assuming that two events can happen at the same time or that we don't have a total ordering on the timeline and see where we can get. So we've just started work on that. Uh, we'd like to add um, reasoning about indeterminate sets of objects. There is, you know, some of the objects which are in the container, but not all of the objects which are in the container. Uh, and uh, then to move on to spatial information and then 
beyond the world, the toy world of containers to something to richer physical domains. Okay, thank you. Any Great. questions? I see both comments in the chat here, okay. and also you get a question from um, Slack. Uh, all right, let me check Slack. Slack. Is that out of the way? Um, you still have a knowledge acquisition bottleneck. Uh, no question. I missed Jesse English talk, unfortunately. I missed the whole conference yesterday, unfortunately, because of uh, a dreary meeting I had to be at. Um, so well, well, uh, basically, so the, 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 the idea was that, uh, that as you encounter errors, as you make errors, uh, you incrementally correct the knowledge base by adding little pieces. It's similar to, to, uh, to uh, some work that Claude Savitt's been doing too. So, so I mean, I, I, I think that that's friendly to your approach. I just wanted to hear you say it. Okay, well, I will, I will certainly check out the paper since you recommend it. Um, it sounds promising, yeah, sure, uh, from, from your one sentence description. Uh, Mohan asks, uh, in the ongoing example, the problem seems to be the characterization of the action, no closed world uh, assumption for action, that's right. Couldn't this be fixed by changing the characterization? I'm not sure what you mean. Can you explain, Mohan? Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, so if you go back a few slides about this thing not being sealed and unsealed and stuff, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I wonder how much of this is because if you are making, I mean, um, I need to see the whole description, but from what I see here, so uh, how much of this is uh, uh, as a result of some um, open world related stuff and how much of this is just in terms of how you uh, keep track of what you should believe, continue believing and what you should not? Um. I'm not sure what the distinction you're making. I mean, my point is that in almost all the reasoning systems, they make the closed world assumption on, on actions, you know, except okay. planning where you're supposed to generate the actions. But even there, right. once you have the planning of the closed world assumption, I want to do, uh, I want to do reasoning without that. No, but so, uh, if you're not told that uh, uh, it is uh, uh, unsealed, then shouldn't, why should you consider that? I'm, I'm just not getting this. Um, why should you? You're saying, I mean, why you're saying that without this constraint, without, that without is not unsealed. That it's not unsealed because you we're not making the closed world assumption, and therefore, between T two and T three, it, it's possible. If if it's if there's no constraint, then it's possible that uh, OC was unsealed and then dumped. So in that case, you wouldn't know. So you either you have to somehow constrain what happens between T2 and T3, because if anything can happen, uh, you can't make the inference about the state of the world in T3. Uh, okay? But if you're not told anything, you shouldn't think it is unsealed either, right? So it should still be inside. No, 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 we're just, we're, that's the point. We're not making the closed world uh, assumption on, on events. For instance, uh, to go back to the example of the duffel bag, we don't know what happened. We, you know, a lot happened to the duffel bag that it ended up at Correct. the Dallas airport. We don't know what that was. We don't mm -hmm. know who carried it and so on. So there's a lot, a lot of events we don't know. And we can't assume that nothing happened. 